Summary of the Dressmaker by Rosalie Ham. Tilly Dunnage, a dressmaker, chooses to go back to Dungatar, the small town where she grew up and where her mother, Molly, still lives. One night, Tilly gets to Dungatar late. Sergeant Farrat, a police officer in Dungatar, recognizes Tilly and gives her a ride to Molly's house, which is on top of the hill and looks out over the town. Sergeant Farrat is happy to find out that Tilly is a dressmaker because he quietly loves fashion and makes women's clothes for himself to wear in private. Tilly notices that Molly's house is a mess and that she is both mentally and physically sick. Over the next few weeks, Tilly takes care of Molly and cleans the house so she has a place to make clothes. Near the end of Dungatar, at the bottom of the hill, the McSwiney family sees movement at Molly's house. The oldest boy of the McSwineys, Teddy, is very interested in Tilly. At the same time, the people of Dungatar are shocked by Tilly's return, and they talk about her a lot. The rich and horny town councilman, Evan Pettyman, is especially upset to see Tilly back. William Beaumont, who went to school with Tilly, also comes back to town right after she does. Alvin and Muriel Pratt run Pratt's General Store. When Alvin and Muriel's daughter Gertrude sees William outside the store, she tries to flirt with him. Muriel calls her away, though, and Gertrude finds William's mother, Elsbeth Beaumont, waiting to be served in the shop. Elsbeth is a rude woman who acts like she has a lot of money to hide the fact that she has a lot of debt. Elsbeth can tell that Gertrude likes William and tries to turn her away. After Elsbeth leaves the shop, Muriel tells Gertrude that William will have to go to a footballer's dance on Saturday night. As Tilly fixes up Molly's house, Molly's friend Teddy McSwiney starts to stop by and get to know her. He gives Tilly an old wheelchair that Molly can use, and he cooks for them. Teddy finally gets Tilly to go with him to the footballer's dance. To wear to the event, Tilly makes a beautiful dress out of cheap fabric. At the dance, nobody will talk to Tilly. Instead, they just stare at her and talk about her all night. Tilly knows that the people in her town will never forgive her for what she did as a child. She remembers how the boys at school, especially Evan Pettyman's son Stuart Pettyman, used to pick on Tilly, beat her up, and even try to get sexual with her. One day, Stuart ran up to Tilly and tried to punch her in the stomach, but Tilly moved just in time. Stuart ran into the wall with his head first, broke his neck, and died. After that, Tilly was taken away from Dungatar and put in a different school. People in town look down on Tilly now, but they like her dress. At the dance, Gertrude meets William and asks him to take a walk with her. They almost make love, and William decides he has to marry Gertrude, which upsets Elsbeth. A few weeks later, Teddy talks Tilly into going to the horse races with him in Dungatar. Tilly goes, and once again, she wears a dress that she made herself and that gets everyone's attention. Gertrude walks up to Tilly and asks her to make her a wedding dress. Tilly agrees, and she makes Gertrude a beautiful dress for her wedding day. People in the town are amazed by Gertrude's dress, and many of the women then go to Tilly and ask her to make them clothes. Tilly will soon have a busy business that she runs out of Molly's house. The fact that Gertrude is married to William makes her very proud. She married him because he comes from the most respected family in town, the Beaumonts. When she finds out that the Beaumonts are secretly poor, she starts taking money from Alvin so that they can keep living in luxury. Elsbeth and Gertrude even started a Dungatar Ladies Social Club to give Dungatar some culture. They decide to hold a fundraiser and a ball, and Tilly is flooded with orders for her dresses, even though people still avoid her and talk about her behind her back. Tilly hires Sergeant Farrat to help her with her work, and they become friends because they both like clothes. Tilly doesn't want to go to the ball, but Teddy McSwiney talks her into going as his date at the last minute. The two of them have fallen in love. Tilly wears a beautiful red dress to the ball, where she meets Teddy. But when Tilly looks at the seating chart, she sees that her name is no longer there. Evan Pettyman spits at her as she tries to get into the hall, and Beulah Herodine, a mean-spirited gossip, slams the door on her and holds it shut. Tilly goes to the park quickly and sits by herself on a bench. 
Teddy finds her and takes her back to his wagon, where they have sex. Tilly tells Teddy about her past, and Teddy proposes to her and says he will take her and Molly away from Dungatar. Together, they go to the silo by the train tracks to watch the sunrise. Teddy tells Tilly that he and his friends used to jump off the tower and into the wheat trucks below when they were kids. Tilly begs Teddy not to jump, but he won't listen. He wants to show her that he's not scared and that he doesn't think Tilly's past has cursed her. He jumps into the truck because he thinks it has weed in it. But it turns out to be full of sorghum and Teddy dies from it. Tilly is very sad about Teddy's death, and most of the people in town blame her for what happened to Teddy, who was very well liked. After he goes, Tilly and Molly will have no one to protect them. People in the town spit at them and throw things at their house. Elsbeth Beaumont's cousin Una Pleasance is hired by the Dungatar ladies to make their clothes for events. Una goes to stay in Dungatar, where she meets Evan Pettyman and starts a relationship with him. Tilly's clothes are better made than Una's, though, and some of the Dungatar women still buy from Tilly in secret. The nearby town of Weinyerp also hears about Tilly's skills, so the Weinyerp Ladies Cultural Society comes to her to have some clothes made. During their visit, Tilly suggests that the ladies' societies work together to put on plays for their upcoming culture event. The Weinyerp Ladies think this is a great idea, and they plan to tell Elsbeth about it at the next meeting. Elsbeth agrees to this idea, but she gets a little worried when the Weinyerp ladies say there will be a prize for the best outfit and they will hire Tilly to dress them. Gertrude suddenly says that Tilly has already been hired by Dungatar, which makes the Weinyerp women sad. Una loses her job, so the Dungatar ladies go to Tilly to beg her to make their outfits. Tilly agrees, but she wants to be paid right away. Ruth Dim, who runs the post office, gives Tilly the money that people in the town gave her to buy insurance for their homes and businesses. The Dungatar ladies tell Tilly that they are going to put on Shakespeare's Macbeth, and Gertrude shows Tilly a plan for 17th century Baroque costumes. Tilly knows that these outfits aren't right for Shakespeare, who lived in the 1600s, but she still agrees to make them. Tilly has a dream one morning about her dead baby Pablo, who died before she got back to Dungatar. When Tilly wakes up and goes into the kitchen, Molly tells her that she had the same dream. Tilly finally tells her mother everything that happened to her before she came back to Dungatar. Tilly had a business making clothes in Paris, and she and her boyfriend, Ormond, had a son named Pablo. When Pablo died and Ormond left Tilly, all of this came to an end. Tilly chose to go back to Dungatar after this. Molly says that Tilly's whereabouts after Stuart Pettyman's death were never told to her. Tilly's father, who Molly says is really Evan Pettyman, kept Molly from knowing where Tilly was, and Molly slowly went crazy from sadness and being alone. Molly has a stroke in the afternoon and dies. Tilly's heart is broken, and she vows to get back at the people of Dungatar, who have always been mean to her and never helped her or Molly. Sergeant Farrat and Tilly go to Molly's wake together, and that night they both get drunk. Molly hated popular music, so Tilly throws her radio out of the house. It hits Beulah Herodine, who is sneaking around the yard to watch them and seriously hurts her. When Tilly finds out about this, she sees it as a way to get back at Beulah for talking about her. The next day, Tilly goes to see Evan's wife, Marigold Pettyman, who Evan often uses drugs on and rapes, and she tells Marigold the truth about Evan. Evan told Marigold that Stuart fell out of a tree and died, but he hasn't told her about his relationship with Tilly or his many affairs. Marigold also knows that Evan has spent all the money that belonged to her father and that she got from him. At the moment, Evan is in Melbourne with Una. When he comes back, Marigold gives him a drug that Tilly gave her made from herbs. Marigold kills him when he is weak, and then she tries to kill herself. Tilly is still making costumes for the Dungatar version of Macbeth, which is coming up soon. The play's director, Gertrude, starts to go crazy with power, and the actors start to hate her. On the day of the show, they finally fire Gertrude, which sends her into a rage. She is then sent to the local hospital. The actors leave for the Weinyerp Theatre. Sergeant Farrat, 
who has a part in the play, says that he will meet them there, but as he is about to leave, he sees that Tilly's house is on fire. Tilly put petrol on everything, and now she's walking around Dungatar setting all the animals free. Sergeant Farrat runs up the hill to try to stop her, but it's too late, the fire rips through the town and burns everything to the ground. In Wynyerp, William's sister Mona Beaumont masturbates on stage during the play Dungatar. This makes the cast of Dungatar very ashamed. The actors from Dungatar are kicked out of the event. The group of sad people takes the bus back to Dungatar, where they are shocked to find that the town has burned down and Tilly has left with their insurance money. Saddened, they see that Elsbeth Beaumont's house is still standing and start walking over the hill to get her help. About the author. Rosalie Ham was born in a small town in Australia called Gerildery. Ham's father was a farmer, so she had a busy childhood and spent a lot of time outside helping on the farm. Ham finished school and went abroad for a while before coming back to Australia to go to Deakin University in Victoria. Ham studied theatre and literature, but while she was in school, she fell in love with fantasy. Then Ham went to work in a nursing home, where she stayed until 2005. Ham's first book, The Dressmaker, was written in 1996 while she was taking a writing class. She had to write part of the book for her class, but she liked the story so much that she wanted to keep going. The Dressmaker came out in 2000, and in 2015, Kate Winslet starred in a movie based on it. Since then, Ham has written three more books, Summer at Mount Hope, There Should Be More Dancing, and The Year of the Farmer. Like The Dressmaker, these books are about people and their ties in Australia. Ham and her husband live in Melbourne, where she works as a literature professor at the University of Melbourne. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.